Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, can you do one on the difference in Old West Cowboys and Modern Cowboys? Cameron Crane. Hmm. Old West Cowboys versus Modern Cowboys. We can do that. This is an interesting subject that came up when a young man approached me at work and told me that I don't look like the cowboys in the rodeos. As I explained the differences that spanned over 150 years, I realized he is not the only one for whom this presents a conundrum. Back in the 19th century, clothes off the rack were not necessarily as form-fitting as today's. We have to understand that back then, the cowboys' clothing was all about function first. Everything they wore had a purpose beyond covering their, uh, nakedness. Oh no you didn't. It was largely a one-size-fits-all kind of thing, which is why you see shirts and photos with screwy sleeve lengths. Nowadays they have big and tall sections to accommodate some of them giant fellers. Post-World War II, western snap button shirts were invented by Jack A. Weil from the Rock Mount Ranchwear Company. Standard shirt buttons were replaced by snaps which allowed for hassle-free removal and a quick release if they got caught on a fence or a horn. They were quickly adopted by the rodeo and ranching community. The shirts were bold in color and design and gave the cowboy a sense of fashion that the Great Depression took away from him. Sporting a western yoke on the back, which is inspired by the yokes on hard-working livestock in the Old West, the contemporary American cowboy was styling. Gotta find what lies beyond the mountain. Today, these can be made with synthetic materials, whereas the 19th century utilized cottons and wools. Silver screen cowboys wore these types of shirts as well. Pants were wool or cotton back in the day, but the modern cowboy replaced those with denim jeans when their durability outshined the other ones. Add some belt loops, and now you have the perfect clothing option for being on the hurricane deck of an equine all day. Also, back then, most laborers didn't have the amount of clothing we have now. A couple sets of clothes, maybe parts that could become a dressier outfit. Because of that, they took measures to protect that clothing. Tucking pants into the high boots or leggings would extend their life. Those boots back then went up to the knees and were pretty plain, but sometime in the 1930s they too started to get some class. Patterns, stitching, and even tooling emerged, which really elevated the look while providing the functionality. The rodeo craze introduced a shorter shaft, and behold, the modern cowboy boot is here. Hats have changed too. Nowadays, store-bought hats come off the shelf with pre-stamped shapes that copy the most popular styles. Back then, hats were largely shaped by the wearer to suit their region or personal flair. Women probably had the biggest change. When pants became a common clothing amongst the female population, we start to see more of them living the cowboy lifestyle and getting involved with rodeos. No longer were they inhibited by side saddles and riding skirts. Modern cowboys here in the West still ride horses, but they also ride quads and trucks. Their rifles are no longer stored in the chuck wagon, but kept in those steel beasts along with their lunch, GPS devices, and other tools made to help them do their job in the 21st century. Professional rodeo is more popular than golf and tennis in this country, and it isn't slowing down. Thanks to the American cowboy for being heroes to our children, and for what you've done for the Western culture all over the world. All right, so it looks like she's got udders hanging up past hawks, so that'll pretty much be a, a little five. Ribs are looking pretty good to give her a score of six. And look like uh, 98, 97 pounds. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail.